Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Wherever you are on our amazing planet. I'm Ariel. <laughs> I'm Shia. Welcome to being here. Yes. I think with all of the wildfires out west, the subject of just breathe is, is pertinent. Yeah, it's timely. And timely. Yeah. Uh, if you can find some good clean air. <laughs> That's true. If not, breathe through a mask. Yeah, my sisters are both in the uh, worst pollution on the planet right now. One's in outside of Portland, one's outside of Seattle, and uh, they're staying inside. So shout that's out a, to them. That's and a smart everybody idea, there. actually. If you can. And I hope my friend Tom Darry is okay. Yeah, we've reached he's out to him and we haven't heard back. Yeah, so. he's somewhere near Estacada in Oregon, and that place is burning up or burned up. And I just don't know about him, and I'm concerned. And uh, Tom, I'm wishing you and Connie the best. Now, wherever you are on our planet, we're wishing you the best. It is time simply to take a breath. There's so much happening in our world, none of which we have control over. And you can get tense, you can forget to breathe, you can try and get somewhere, you can wish it were different, or you, you can could be, be here. here where you are in this moment. Now, uh, our technology of instantaneous transformation is based in three principles and one major principle. The major principle is listening to allow what's being said to come in and hear it, not filter it through what you already know or compare it to what you already know, but hear what somebody has to say. The benefit of this is a couple. Uh, one is your communications will be far better with whoever you're listening to or speaking to. Secondly, it'll pull you into the current moment of your life. And that's where transformation takes place when you get synced up with the current moment because no two things can occupy you at the same time, which is the second of the three principles. And if you are listening, you're not listening to your internal dialogue, which constantly complains to you about you're not doing it well enough. And that may be what our guest or guests are going to talk with us about their complaints about themselves and their thoughts. We'll find out. I don't know. I haven't spoken to him about it yet. So uh, this past weekend, Shai and I uh, facilitated a seminar weekend uh, or weekend seminar uh, with a master acting teacher and talented actor, Andy Schneeflock. And we were facilitating improv your way to the moment. And most improv techniques start with yes, and so if I say, hey, what are you doing with a chicken on your head? Um, just thinking that I need to lay some eggs. So rather than go, what are you talking about? I don't have a chicken on my head. It's about going with whatever is tossed to you. And life tosses the moment to you. One of the things that makes Andy so talented uh, in teaching improv is that he does not start with yes and. That's secondary. He starts with listening. If you are listening, then you're receiving whatever it is that you are stepping into. First principle of instantaneous transformation. Anything you resist persists. If you don't like it, don't want it, or don't hear it, it keeps coming back. Over and over. Yes. Second principle, you can only be exactly as you are in any given moment. So as Shai was starting this show, uh, of course, we both were, this, this podcast, uh, as he was discussing listening, I found my mind flitted off a couple of times. And it was really about bringing myself back here. If I resisted you, that, my mind you, was flitty. You, you thought thoughts rather than listening to me. I'm insulted. <laughs> From time to time, I did. 
Because that's where I was starting from. You can only be exactly as you are in any given moment. Really? And he's only kidding when he says he's insulted. Yes. Third principle, anything you see without judging completes itself in an instant. In an instant. Now, that's hard to get because, you see, we've been raised in a culture called change where everything happens incrementally over time rather than outside of time in a moment of illumination where you see something and if you don't judge yourself for what you how you've been but just see it as it is it completes itself in an instant the seeing is enough you don't have to talk to yourself about it and i know we've been trained to talk to ourselves about everything but just seeing is enough to complete things when you just see something you're more likely to, with freedom, to breathe. Simply take a breath. When you're judging something, chances are you're getting tighter and tighter mm -hmm. rather than breathing freely. Hey, shall we take our first uh, guest? Let's. We have Micah today. She's calling in from Dusseldorf in Germany. Yes, welcome to the show. Hi, Ariel. Hi, Shia. Nice being with you. Nice being with you too. Mm -hmm. What can we do for you today, Micah? It's really funny. Um, when I listen to you, I, I could immediately see that it's really linked to the question I have. Uh, uh -huh. What's that? <laughs> I joined you for the weekend seminar with um, Andy Schneefrock and um, when I was listening to the people, I felt after a while into the moment and I felt really reflect, refreshed and enjoyed just being with all the participants. And um, I that, sense a but coming. What's the but? <laughs> yeah, yes, but that's true. <laughs> but so often not yet at the moment because i i feel i'm in this conversation but so often i'm just in my thoughts and i cannot stop judging myself what i did what i thought everything instead of just being there okay let me stop you because what you're saying is so deliciously good if you resist your thoughts that's the first principle. Anything you resist persists and grows stronger. So, you know, it's like my saying to you right now, don't think about a pink elephant. <laughs> what happened? I can imagine a pink elephant. <laughs> you, you, you immediately start because if you resist something, it's what dominates your Internal conversation. That's right. We didn't mention this, but we do finish each other's sentences. Yes. So you're not, you see, your preferences get in the way of you having a magical life. Because life, the second principle, shows up the way it does. It shows up exactly as it does. It cannot be any other way than the way it is in the current moment. And if you resist that, you get stuck in that spot. So we've resisted a lot of things over our lives. And so we're stuck with all the things we resist. Anything you see, you notice, you know, you, you have this voice that talks to you and you notice it and you don't resist it. Or if you resist it, you don't resist that you're resisting it. <laughs> So when you see that you're resisting that thought, you just go, aha, uh -huh, I see I'm resisting that thought. Now, if you resist resisting that thought, well, if you see that you're resisting resisting that thought while well, you're resisting it, eventually you'll come to a place of neutrality where you can just see that you're resisting and that completes it. See, your life is locked up in those things you, you resisted that are incompletions and they keep coming around because life wants to complete itself. The universe goes to a beginning, middle and end. 
everything wants to complete itself. And if you don't let it complete itself by resisting it, it will keep coming back. That's the first principle. What you resist persists. Now, inherent in your question, Micah, is your agenda. Your agenda to have a quiet mind. Your mind has now identified that a quiet mind is a better mind. Listening is better than being distracted. So it's trying to actuate uh, being non-distracted when it's the thing that's distracting you in the first place. The other thing is when your mind is busy, chances are you've missed that you've you're already upset that a busy mind tends to be a symptom rather than the problem. It's a symptom that you missed something, you resisted something, you didn't like something, you don't want something. You had the idea, oh, I'm behind, and you latched on to it. When that happens, your mind revs. The other thing is, I totally forgot. You held up four fingers and I, I four, four minutes. minutes. Yeah, I got it. I, I followed that. So I had a separate conversation. Um, yeah. And the other thing is this, that may save you from something else. See, the upset may save you from something creative that's apparently in your future. Or intimacy. Or intimacy, intimacy can be very uh, can be confronting. Very and very creative. <laughs> that's true too. But I I notice this about myself. There are certain places where I tend to have a noisy mind. Uh, The beginning of making love and showers. And what I've discovered is that if I treat that busy mind as cleaning house, it runs down all on its own. So if I'm in the shower and I'm not just washing my hair, but I'm washing out the concerns of the day or the concerns of the morning. And if I'm being intimate with Shia and I start having these fragments of thoughts about an email I didn't send or, or a, a meal I want to make, uh, if I allow it to run without judging it, it's as if those are the concerns that are, in my pores, in my DNA, that's between me and being where I am. And if I allow it and embrace it, it very quickly floats away. If I embrace it in order to get it to quickly float away, away, by the way, that would be the first First principle principle in in disguise. That's cool. Very cool. Yeah, you know, look, And here's the thing, if you can remind yourself when you get in these moods that it's this moment is perfect, rather than trying to get out of it, get interested in it, it'll complete itself. But you can't get interested in it to get rid of it Mm -hmm. because that's a manipulation. See, life supports you if you let it. But if you have a preference that it be different, then you resist what you have and you keep it in place. One other thing, Mike. These are those non, never ending arguments with Stefan. Yeah, (laughs) I know what you mean. (laughs) Mm -hmm. You know, you also mentioned that uh, you did the weekend, it's now Wednesday and, and your concerns are not here, but you have the expectation of them coming back. What if it never comes back the same way? What if your expectations produces it rather than being here to see what happens, recognizing and looking at what skills you currently have that may not have occurred to you before? Of course, we have similar thought patterns. They repeat over and over. But when you're here, uh, there's whole new ways of relating to your life. And you discover them in the moment, not as an idea, but as an observation. You see it. You don't figure out, well, if I'm here, then I'll be okay. You're just okay. Guess what? This is what here looks like. That's right. Feels like, sounds like. So welcome to the moment. Just breathe. Just breathe. (laughs) Thank you. That's very cool. (laughs) You're very welcome. Thank you for 
being with us. Yeah, thanks for being our guest today. Thanks a lot. It was my pleasure. Okay, so now it's time for our listener feedback spotlight. Where we'll hear from one of our listeners about how transformation has impacted his or her life. If you'd like to learn more or register for any of our upcoming virtual courses, visit transformationmadeeasy.com. You can also sign up for our newsletter there, but really... If you want to deep dive into the possibility of you and having magic in your life, visit transformationmadeeasy.com and join us for one of those virtual seminars. Yeah. This is Ute calling from Hamburg, Germany. And um, I frequented some seminars from Ariel and Shire. And the first seminar was extraordinary and um, it really changed my life and made me feel so much lighter and easier. And I have another relationship with my daughter and it started from then on to be greater and greater. If you would like to experience an expanded sense of well-being, join us. Connect with people all over the world from the comfort of your own home at Aaron and Shire's lively interactive global video seminars. Participate in any of their two-hour online events or take a deep dive into the magic of being you at a virtual weekend seminar. Come on, let's connect. Find out more and register at transformationmadeeasy.com. We have two upcoming seminars. One is on a Friday, October 16th. It's called the Freedom to Breathe. It's a day devoted to just allowing yourself the license to be you and the freedom to breathe. You know, you don't realize how much of the time you hold your breath as you go through your life. And especially any situation that seems in any way threatening or upsetting or that might have some consequences, instead of breathing, we normally hold our breath and tough our way through it. I have a good example for that. Uh, But let me announce the weekend also, which is fun, is the Access Way to Enlightenment on the 17th and 18th. A lot of people are doing both both courses. There's a discount if you do both courses. You can find all the info for them at transformationmadeeasy.com. And the good example is uh, last week we were driving down the road and all of a sudden our car just stopped having a motor. And it actually turned out to be quite fun. Shia just gently brought the car over to the side of the road. Well, it, it's, it's our, our Suburban. It's more of a uh, SUV than a car. And so it's quite large. And it had all our fishing equipment in it because we were on a fishing trip. It was our first time away since March, so it was really a, a fun adventure. We're going down the highway at 70 miles an hour, and then suddenly... 55, and then and, 50. And, and, I, and given it gas, and nothing happens. Ultimately, we discovered our fuel pump had gone out, but at that time, we didn't know it, and Shia had the presence of mind, instead of trying to find a tow truck or scramble, he called 911, and they brought the state police. And we have to shout out to Officer Hodges... Of the he, Pennsylvania State Police at State College, Pennsylvania. Uh, he also said his wife likes to listen to uh, podcasts as well. So if either of you are listening, uh, what a great, great guy and what a great, great interaction. Yeah, it was just so much fun. It was. We got the toe tech drive. We were... He walked up without a mask. I didn't have my mask on. I was like, oh, mask. I put on my mask. He was going to go get his. And we're like, we have a new one for you. It was just an incredible treat. And we got to ride in the back of his police car over to the um, car dealership. And that was fun, too, Uh, especially since he didn't put us in handcuffs. Thank you very much, officer. Yes. (laughs) The whole thing was fun. 
because and it wasn't our preference we wanted to go home we were we had a, a dinner date scheduled with the person who was cat sitting our cat while we were gone yeah our cat baby which we call babysitting yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes and uh of course ultimately we didn't get home till close to midnight and we had the course the next day and it was all perfect and fun and lovely because you have because your preferences. we said so yes because we said so. Our preferences would have been that the fuel pump did not go out and we didn't have to spend four hours but in, in State College, Pennsylvania. But we did find a great restaurant for ribs. Yeah, we did. We did. Now we're trying to, you know, we want to get back there. It's the closest one, you know. It's three and a half hours away, it but, you know. It doesn't make sense. But yeah. it really was fun. So uh, when... You step into what is happening, it's fun. When you resist what is happening, it's not so fun. Just saying. Shall we take our next uh, guest? Yes, let's. All right. Our next guest is Deirdre. And I'm not sure where you are today. Where are you? Hi, guys. Good to be with you. I am in Paris. Ah, well, lovely. Gay Paris. Uh, gay Paris. Gay and very warm Paris. Oh, yes. Is nice it? to have you with us. It's yes. warm, huh? Yeah, it's wonderful. A little chilly here. When yeah. it's second it, summer. We lit our fire in the new wood stove last night. It yeah. was very cozy. It oh, was. Oh, lovely. Open the windows to get it cool enough to have a fire, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing, isn't it? There's beautiful things for every season. That's right. Beautiful yeah. things for every season. As long as you're not trying to have fall be summer or... Winter be spring, you're, you're in good shape. What can, what we, can we, do we do for you? you? Well, there was something you said to Micah that really struck me and it related to what I was thinking of asking you anyway. Life supports you if you let it. And I've been having a pretty interesting time the last couple of months. Uh, since the end of July, I'm a classical musician. I play violin and viola and I haven't been able to play because I've had a, an injury to a finger and it's been a bit of a mystery to specialists. I've seen a, a lot of doctors and had a lot of tests. And it looks like it's coming to some sort of resolution soon. But it's on top of COVID and having stopped work already back in March, like most people, or many people. Um, yeah, I had a month where I then went back to work for July. But after that, since the end of July, I haven't been able to work. And it's been a really interesting thing for me to watch because within that, I've been pretty okay with it. And I've, I've been thinking for a little while anyway about doing some extra study and doing a course perhaps online. And I started to enroll in that. I've also been developing a podcast. I started to do more of that. Uh, and as I went along and did all of this, I had a couple of little freak outs along the way, but nothing major. But what I noticed was that the thing that kept coming up was you should be more worried. If you're not more worried about this, this is all going to fall okay. away. Okay, so let's talk. Your mind, the conversation you listen to, that voice in your head is a survival machine. So its basis is worry. It's worry about possible disastrous futures rather than the moment. When you're here in real time, in the moment, the future exists, but it doesn't really exist. Because, you see, it's, it's not cast in stone. It's not something that... It, it's possible that it can change. And your ideas all go to the worst scenario because it's a survival machine. It wants to survive the worst possible scenarios. So it's going to paralyze you in its thought process. It will say, oh, I'll never be able to play again. Well, I'll tell you something. I had a fall about a month ago. Uh, I was on a uh, boat launch ramp and I slipped on the slippery surface because the uh, water had receded and there was moss there and it was slick and I went down. And I went down really hard, 
where I couldn't breathe for a couple of moments, maybe, I don't know how long, but to breathe hurt. And so I went to the doctor and had x-rays and I didn't break any ribs, but it felt like it. The worst thing of all was sneezing. A sneeze was about the most painful thing you can imagine. Coughs were bad enough, laughing was bad, breathing was bad, but sneezing was hellacious. Okay, that's a month ago. My body has healed itself. I sneezed last night and there was a vague echo of how it was once, but it was just this vague echo that didn't last but a couple of seconds. Your body will heal itself. Your hand will heal itself if you leave it alone. But if well, you leave it alone in your thoughts, <clears throat> that's what I, I did mean. a lot of uh, body work on different areas that were spastic. So he's not saying if you have something happening in your arm that's affecting your hand that you don't get massage or you don't get acupuncture, you don't address it. But picking on it in your thoughts, worrying about whether or not will heal. That, that keeps it inflamed. If you forget about it long enough, it'll leave you alone. That's why when you come to a seminar, you don't listen to your thoughts. You listen to what people are saying and you get pulled out of that mindset that you've lived with forever. And in that moment, you become enlightened. You fall into the current moment of your life and then you start experiencing life rather than worrying about life. I can't tell you, Deirdre, how many people have come to, say, a weekend seminar. They've had an injury of some sort or a long existing back pain or, or migraines. And they get involved in what's actually happening. And by the end of the weekend, it's gone. Well, now, I'm not saying that as a prescriptive for you. But didn't we just have somebody say something yes, like Andy that? Yes, Andy had that as well. I no, can't remember uh, who else. Somebody uh, else. Uh, Kareen. Kareen. Oh, yes. That she was, she couldn't breathe. She couldn't sleep laying down because she had a sciatic pain. And mm. she did a weekend seminar, which she thought might have been really tough because it was a Zoom seminar and it, there were multiple hours a day. But at the end of it, uh, she could lay down and actually sleep in a bed for the first time in months. When you no longer work on it in your thoughts, there's whole other possibilities. Did you ever go to a doctor's office where you had something wrong with you? And so you, before you met with the doctor, you thought about what it was and how, how to it describe felt it. and tried to describe it and it disappeared? Absolutely. Including with this finger many times. Y yes, because <laughs> if you al allow yourself to be with the way it is, it completes itself. When you resist it, when you when your preference to be able to play your violin or ch cello, is it? Viola. No. Viola. 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 Uh, when, when that preference is there, the pain is there. I have another thought for you, though. You've told yourself that you would like to do more studies. Mm -hmm. So now, just as a possible, I'm not saying you're to blame, but you've created the opportunity to have space to do these studies. If you're not doing the studies, tell yourself the truth that you don't want to do them. Because otherwise, you may keep this around for a long time as an incentive to do what you don't intend to do in the first place. Oh, that's fantastic. Isn't that lovely? Yeah. It really is. Yeah, it really is. And but the you know, your mind is tricky. <laughs> Absolutely. And all it likes to be doing something and having a, a goal and an aim as well. And I noticed yeah. at the very beginning when this first happened, the thing I struggled the most with was, what do I do with my days? Well, it's interesting. I, I know that we are doing this as an audio podcast, but we are recording it via Zoom and we have the video on so we get to see you. And we've known you for a number of years. We don't get to see you that often because clearly you usually are traveling with the orchestra and you are living in Paris. But your face is more relaxed than I've seen it in a long time. That's right. You really look lovely. What if not doing anything 
when you're not doing anything has been really good for you. I think it really has. And knowing you guys and hearing how you've talked about this before um, really helped me at the beginning because I did just consciously give myself license to be with it, be in Paris. I've not actually had this amount of time in my own city, in my own apartment ever before. And some days I've just been here and had a quiet time. Some days I've gone out and gone to museums which are empty because there are no tourists. So you can go to the Louvre and the Musée d'Orsay. There's almost nobody there. And to walk through there quietly just for a couple of hours, come back home, no problem. And I've actually thoroughly enjoyed it. And that's where the, also the impetus to uh, do some extra studies and have a, a stronger skill base to perhaps not be a freelance traveling musician for the rest of my life to give myself other options, uh, started to, it had been sitting there for a while in the back of my head, but it started to creep forward and not as a plan B, but oh, I actually want to do this. So I've actually, I found myself starting to take steps to enroll and do different things, but not by thinking about it, just by watching myself see what I do. That's great. So I have a question. Yeah. Are you willing to enroll even if your finger spontaneously gets better? Yes. And that's what's wonderful because it has start to spon started to spontaneously get better. And I found the energy to keep going towards these new studies only increased with that. And instead of thinking, oh, well, now I have to put that on the back burner and go back to my job, my first thoughts were, great, how can I take maybe a bit of a step back from all the work that I've been doing, really choose the stuff that I only really, really want to do, let the other stuff go and make space to study. Sounds I'm great. excited. You should be. Yeah. Here's the thing. Your life is newly happening in each moment unless you bring your history into the moment. Can I make one suggestion for yes. you? Yes. As you're talking and you're getting excited, I see you preparing to rev up to be equally as busy as you were before, but only in a different framework. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> what if that being compressed is not a component to your success? What if it's an old way you related to things when you didn't know yourself so well, you felt you had to drive yourself? What if you can have all of these other interests and growth possibilities? And breathe at the same time. Yeah, fantastic. I hadn't seen that part of it, but absolutely. And that includes as things get busier, you can still go to museums if you want. You can still spend time in your home. You can still go out and just walk the streets of Paris because it gives you pleasure. Yeah, fantastic. Absolutely. You're not behind. See, this is a perfect moment. You're not behind. There's no place to get to. This it's, is it. You know, it's also a perfect moment uh, to talk about next week's episode. And that's the, the theme of next week is complain brain. Because... <laughs> When in idle, that brain tends to complain. About everything, especially you. Really a treat speaking with you today. Yeah, and lovely seeing you mm -hmm. also via Zoom. I mean, uh, you look great. and Thank you. Absolute treat for me. It feels good to see you. It feels good to be with you. Shape, yes. Yeah. Great shape. Right back mm. at you. Thank you. Well... I guess this is a wrap. Yeah, this is it for today's podcast, but we'll be back next week. So, come on back. <laughs> Don't miss being, being here. here.